Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Shayna Jacques. Um, thank you for all of you that um, join us today for our presentation. Today we have, oops, okay, sorry. Okay. Steve, can you hear me? Okay, here you go. Yes, I can. Okay, good. So, okay, my computer was acting up. Okay, so got it. So today we have um, Steve Nodone uh, with us to present uh, a webinar about technology for caregiver. Steve, um, thank you again for doing the presentation for us. Steve has a background um, including 40 years in technology across several sectors, including global financial services, RAD, and CUNY Computer Science Department adjunct of lecture. So today we'll um, have um, information about technology for caregiver, how to manage um, their technology, how they can be helpful for them. So some of you know a little bit about PSS, um, it's the same presentation I have every time we have a webinar, but if you do have more questions about PSS, don't hesitate to contact me. Again, my name is Shayna Jard. I'm the Outreach Manager for PSS Circle of Care. We are a nonprofit agency that had for mission to strengthen the capacity for all the New Yorker and their family and the community to thrive. Um, we've, been, we've been founded since 1962. We have a variety of our services out in our um, agency. We, um, one of our program is PSS Circle of Care that I am especially part of it. It's um, a services that provide service to caregiver, family caregiver um, for a friend or that can be a friend, a husband, of, um, a wife, a daughter, a son who's, who's taking care of their loved one who is currently here for or has memory loss. We also have a kinship, a kinship caregiver program where someone other than the parent is caring for a child. And we, ha we have our famous coming of age program that inspires people 50 plus to live with passion and purpose. Please, if you have any question or if you know anybody that needs our help, don't hesitate to give them our hotline number that's 866 six six five one seven one three or they can um visit our website that's pssusa.org um please tap any question that you have in the chat box or if you want to actually say it you can just wave that's an option that you can wave and it will allow you to to ask your question um you can wait at the, the after the presentation or steve will take some question during the presentation right steve uh, that's correct. Okay, so now I'm going to start start my screen and you can start yours. Again, thank you everybody and good participation. Well, thank you for the introduction and I'm going to try to share my presentation now. Um, as we start this, um, I'll say that I'm also a caregiver and that's how I came upon a PSS Circle of Care and two wonderful people that I that I've been dealing with, Jennifer Sanchez and Juliana Bartles, who have uh, also introduced me and my family to other caregivers to understand circumstances of our own, uh, you know, their own condition. Um, is there anybody that cannot see the, um, the screen caregiver tips at this point? Okay, with that, um, as mentioned, I have a um, very long background in history in technology research and, um, and development. And as such, in our own case of caregiving, we came upon a number of circumstances that, that were happening as, you know, as time progressed. So starting on uh, slide one, basic questions were coming up, like living alone, or are they living with a caregiver? Do they require regular visits to check on the health and safety, or are there urgent visits that are built into it? And as caregivers, or 
uh, supporters to caregivers. We know that these circumstances happen uh, to varying degrees in, uh, in different cases. Are you concerned about your loved one eating properly? Are they sleeping properly? Are they wandering around the house during the day or at night? Um, do you worry that they may fall and no one will know? Do they, are they reluctant to carrying a uh, signaling device and so forth? Uh, do they answer the phone? Can they clearly communicate? Their environment itself, uh, is it safe, comfortable, and healthy for them? Uh, as the conditions change, these circumstances and requirements change as well. Do they follow a productive schedule or do you find them uh, becoming non-responsive and removing themselves or withdrawing from social interaction? Are they still answering the phone or answering the door and uh, becoming a victim of uh, fraudulent callers or visitors? And are caregivers involved when you're not present? Uh, the lifestyle and safety of the daily activities. What are their needs? Uh, nutritional balanced meals, regular medication, uh, sometimes several medications several times a day. Uh, wake and sleep cycles, are they getting to a point where they're confusing them? Uh, one runs into the other and they become non-performing uh, non during the day or you know, highly active at night when there's nobody around to help them. Uh, are they getting men mental and memory stimulation as and when they need it? Are they getting physical stimulation and exercise, personal hygiene, personal care? Uh, do they feel good about themselves? And uh, are all safety actions being taken properly, such as locking doors and turning off the water so floods don't occur? Um, a little bit about this uh, to manage the expectations of the audience. These, these are tips that uh, I and my family and other caregivers that we know uh, have come together and seen occur within our own environments. And we pull together the set of what are called use cases or things that we have observed occurring. So these might work for you. They might be, uh, you know, they might be equivalent to things that you're seeing in your own environment, or they may not, depending on the particular circumstances or the stage of, uh, you know, stage of decline. Uh, and as a um, you know, caveat, these are tips and don't replace professional assessments. Uh, you really should be looking into professional uh, security, home security, fire alarms, carbon monoxide detection, emergency services, meals, medications, and so forth to ensure that things are being handled uh, according to your own personal needs. Uh, to focus on what this is, uh, these are augmentations or amplifiers to caregivers. Uh, as you'll see, they will help caregivers who are typically burning the candle at sometimes two and even more ends between caring for their elderly loved ones and caring for their, uh, their own children or other relatives or friends, as the case may be. One of the, uh, in searching for different uh, things, uh, we've seen that loved ones forget about daily routines. They become despondent and non-responsive. Uh, one of the things that I, I discovered, interestingly enough, free and online, is this uh, calendar called Dementia Diary. Uh, what uh, can be done with it is a diary is put up into a Google Calendar, and then a tablet mounted on somebody's wall, on your loved one's wall, so that the calendar can tell them about current events, upcoming events, and so forth. Uh, a very concerned uh, caregiver wrote this and uh, delivered it free of charge on both the Google Play Store and the, uh, the Amazon Store, uh, the Apple iPhone Store. So it's available free of charge. What you would need to do to implement such a thing is purchase an inexpensive tablet, uh, install the Dementia Diary app, set up a Google Calendar, and then you know, start um, running normal routines to remind your loved one of what they, uh, what they should be expecting. And it could be anything from people visiting, uh, letting them know that there's a fun TV show on, something that they might like, and so forth. 
as the uh, circumstances progress, you may find that your loved one can no longer operate the TV and cable box. Now we these days have cable TV, we have multiple input sources and so forth. And even to us, it could be confusing to manage this. To uh, somebody that, that is progressing with dementia, they may no longer even recognize a TV control from a cell, uh, from a cell phone or a uh, wireless phone in their house and confuse devices. So there's a device that uh, after some research I found, a unified remote control, in this case the flipper, which can unify and consolidate the controls to the cable TV box plus a TV into a single control with four buttons. On, off, channel up, channel down, and volume, volume up and volume down. Uh, finding that you could lock these in and make it very easy for your loved one to operate themselves if they're capable of doing that uh, is a very, becomes a very easy task at that point. Um, just get into some of the gory details and there's probably a little bit of chuckling on you know behind the scenes on this webinar HDMI 1, HDMI 2, USB, US, uh, aux, games, apps, widgets and so forth. We have such complicated technology that your team may know how to operate it, and the adults and the uh, you know the parents may barely get by, and our loved ones who are uh, dealing with dementia may no, no longer understand it all. So my motto is keep it simple. Keep it as simple as possible. Lock things down. What you'll find is that uh, people you know, dealing with dementia do not need 270 channels worth of uh, programming. They may need one or two, depending on their wants and needs at the time. Getting more complicated, um, switching inputs, even having a caregiver with, uh, with a loved one, they may push buttons incorrectly and no longer be able to select the right devices, the right inputs, the right outputs. There's a device out there called uh, from Logitech called the Harmony Hub, which is frequently available on sale for around $60 from any of your, your normal stores, Best Buy and so forth, which you can program to one button push and switch everything back to normal. Uh, it could come in handy, especially if your loved one is still functioning on their own, but you visit them a couple of times a week and find out that their TV no longer works because they've been pushing buttons. So there are capabilities out there to try to simplify and streamline managing their home entertainment capabilities. At some point, you may find that your loved one can no longer reliably operate a telephone anymore. Uh, what we found is that there are picture telephones that really simplify the, uh, the whole process. Uh, this one is available on Amazon. You replace the button keys, uh, the number keys with photos of the uh, people that you would want them to contact and simply by lifting and pushing the face of somebody that they recognize, uh, they can make a call out when they, uh, when they want without having to remember multiple buttons to select for dialing somebody or even remembering phone numbers themselves. Getting to a point as, uh, as the condition progresses and gets worse, you may find that they don't answer the phone when you call. They might be afraid to answer the phone. They may no longer recognize that it's a phone ringing or they may get confused when they're trying to answer the phone in terms of what button to push. Some of the phones these days, let's face it, have answer, hang up, swap. They have all sorts of buttons on them that can you know, confuse almost anybody. Uh, in order to manage a loved one's environment and try to get in touch with them when they no longer will reliably answer the phone themselves, I found this device from Amazon called the Echo Show. 
and it has one feature that was was key called drop in the drop in feature allows an authorized user to connect to this video conferencing device from your iPhone or your Android phone or even another Amazon Echo device. It allows you to drop in, connect to uh, the loved one by way of video and audio. And you probably have seen cases where seeing a, you know, a, a happy smiling face causes a loved one that's, uh, you know, it's declining with dementia to be able to be more responsive and recognize a face rather than just try to, uh, you know, to just trying to, uh, you know, respond to a voice. Uh, setting it up is not too hard, but you do need a mobile phone number. And one of the things I could suggest is going to Freedom Pop, which has free mobile plans that you can set up a mobile number that's dedicated to this Echo Show device. When you set it up, if you choose to go in this direction, it's very important to, uh, to ensure the security of the, um, of the device. In other words, make absolutely sure that uh, people are not uh, granted access excessively. I'm just curious if there are any questions so far or any, um, any particular focus on this. You can still hear me, Shana? Okay. Next on the list, um, your loved one is you know is operating in the same household as you are you may be over you may be doing some chores in the house and while you're in the washroom they get up and they try to get out of the house there are simple methods that you could monitor whether a door is being opened or a window is being opened one of the things that uh, that will work is this device which is a remote door chime you can connect the sensor to one or more doors, and the chime itself could be brought into an area where you're doing work. So if your loved one uh, gets up and starts going around, and while you're busy doing something else, tries to uh, open a door and get out of the house, you can get an, uh, a chime ringing, and then uh, be able to intermediate and, uh, and head that off before they get too far. This one became uh, an interesting one. Uh, as people age, necessarily they, they start feeling changes in temperature a bit more uh, intensely. Too hot, too cold, and so forth. And with thermostats these days, it's all, uh, all too often complicated for, uh, for them to operate. You might find that they turn the temperature way up or way down, and in between visits, uh, the house is either way too hot or way too cold. These days, you can get uh, remote accessible, remote programmable thermostats with child locks so that the keypad does not respond. They can't change the temperature without uh, you being involved. So with these remote control thermostats and an app running on your phone or on your uh, tablet, you can change the temperature and monitor the temperature in the house. Uh, these thermostats frequently come with rebates from the utilities. If you're in the New York metro area, Con Edison and National Grid, both frequently offer rebates where you can get them virtually free. Uh, some of these can be installed, uh, self-installed, but if uh, you're not comfortable with self-installing and don't know what a C-wire is, uh, getting it professionally installed would be the uh, path of choice. Many of you are probably familiar with the picture on here, which is a ring doorbell. As your loved one might be living at home, but subject to scammers and so forth, you might want to keep an eye on uh, what's going on. 
and connect your own phone to their doorbell. So if someone rings the doorbell, before they can inadvertently open the door to a stranger, you might be able to intermediate, answer the door, answer the, uh, the doorbell, and then communicate with the person that's, uh, that's trying to gain access, thereby avoiding the problem. In having discussions with, uh, with various caregivers, it's apparent that uh, unless you're living with somebody 24 by 7, you really don't know what's going on in the house. And your loved one might be losing uh, day-night uh, sleep-wake cycle synchronization. So they might be up at night wandering as though it's the daytime and they might be sleeping it uh, during the daytime when it's nighttime. Uh, this particular little box in the upper right-hand corner is a device that uh, comes from a, a company called HomeSeer, which is a home automation company. That little box is a fully contained uh, home automation server, and it can be paired with things like this um, motion sensor, and then coupled together with a cell phone or a tablet or multiple cell phones and tablets to alert you to what's happening within your loved one's household. So you could basically have these devices alert you that somebody is moving in the house at, you know, in the middle of the night and you might be able to take, in, uh, take some type of action to determine whether it's a normal activity they're doing or if they're truly, um, you know, no longer sleeping at night and need to have some other type of mitigation uh, activity going on. This page is talking about planning ahead. When I'm mentioning home automation, that could get uh, quite sophisticated and have quite a bit of capability built into it. So as you're looking in these use cases, you know, wandering at night, wandering during the day and so forth, you might want to jot down all of the circumstances that, uh, that you're dealing with as caregiver or that your loved one is dealing with to try to get a big picture of what's happening and also speak with other people about what to expect down the line because a lot of these cases do, uh, do progress in similar manners. So with home automation, you may want to plan ahead and get a sufficient system to expand upon for future, uh, future requirements. So moving a little bit further into the home automation, um, whether your loved one is living in a house or an apartment or another facility where they have a locking door, uh, you may want to know that they're properly locking the door or leaving the door unlocked once they, uh, they open it. And with a system like these, these locks, which are available on you know, many uh, sites from a company called Schlage, and they're also available from other companies, these locks electronically connect with the home automation system. And if the, the deadbolt is spun, you'll get an alert saying that the door has been unlocked. If it's been spun closed, you can get an alert saying the door is now locked. So you could know whether your loved one is unlocking or locking the door, and you could take action to remotely lock it if you know that they're safe inside, but they forgot to lock the door when they opened it previously. Video cameras are very important. If you're not there, typically you don't uh, really have an understanding of what's going on. And there might be cases where your loved one is, uh, is taking actions like climbing stairs or you know, doing other things that, uh, that might, you might want to know about. You might also want to know that they're dealing with friends or they have company and they're interacting. So putting a video camera that's remotely accessible into 
your loved one's environment could be very helpful. And I understand that PSS Circle of Care also uh, occasionally gives, uh, you know, gives assistance in putting these devices together. So you may want to speak with your, uh, your partner there. Uh, cameras vary. Some could get quite inexpensive. Uh, better systems or bigger systems could get more expensive. But as a, um, an information technology professional and a risk manager, I will say repeatedly, be aware of privacy issues. Putting cameras into your loved one's uh, household or living space should be done with the care and concern that you don't want to be intruding on their privacy and you don't want anybody else to be able to have access to this, uh, to this capability or information. As circumstances progress, you may find that a single, a single video camera may do a certain amount of uh, coverage and may be good for certain circumstances. But you may have a circumstance, a situation where a network video recorder that has multiple cameras and can record to a hard drive on a, uh, on a home unit, on a network video recorder unit, thereby allowing you to set up things like security events, motion detecting events, store the recordings for a long period of time, monitor the outside of their premise as well as uh, certain key portions of the inside of their premise, and do it all remotely. You may also want to consider using such capabilities as you might get a 24 by 7 or even uh, you know, an occasional visitor to come to uh, your loved one's domicile and you know, basically provide security for their environment as well. <clears throat> Home security is, uh, is important, as, uh, as you know. Things like fire detection, uh, carbon monoxide detection, if their gas stove is still uh, working, which is uh, in, an, in and of itself a, uh, a concern, whether water uh, is allowed to run and floods might take place. There are many home security providers that can monitor all of these and raise alerts to not only the uh, police, fire, ambulance, but also to an authorized uh, recipient of calls. One of the things that's important is to, uh, is to consider these true security needs and recognize that a loved one uh, is a, um, you know, very a very precious um, uh, person and having such professional security implemented might be very important. As our loved ones cook and manage appliances and so forth, occasionally they may leave them turned on. Getting back to, uh, to this simple home security or home uh, automation device, you can also connect devices into it like this little plug that plugs into a wall outlet and then the appliance plugs into it. By plugging into this appliance monitor, you can tell whether an appliance is on or off. You can tell how long the device has been on or off, how many kilowatt hours it's drawn. And you can also take remote action to turn the device off. So you could switch that device on and off. Adding into this, um, this home seer box, uh, you might get these devices on sale or you know, on any normal website for about $50 each. And they could be put on anything from a toaster oven to a microwave oven to a coffee maker to a washer and dryer so that all of these are, uh, are easily monitorable remotely. Taking this uh, again, yet another step further. Um, when this foil was uh, put together, the winter was here. Now we're coming into the summertime, so it's uh, a different uh, 
you know, different perspective, but uh, our loved ones might leave windows open or there might be temperature differences between a bedroom and a living room that we may want to know about. These little devices, um, in this case, the multi-sensor six, uh, can monitor temperature, motion, humidity, light level, and other conditions within rooms. So adding into the same home automation server, you could add these sensors into particular rooms to remotely monitor the temperature, humidity, and so forth. In this graph, I just included a temperature chart to show how the living room and the bedroom temperature might be different at different times of the day and how they might uh, differ at the same time of day because of heating system you know, imbalances and so forth. But that could come in very handy to know whether the temperature is appropriate for them and even more importantly, whether they have a window open that they might be letting cold air into their, uh, into their environment. Next one, um, this question came back from uh, Jennifer and Julie, from uh, some of their clients saying, how do we know if, you know, mom has a, in this particular case, it was a urinary tract infection because of the number of times they're visiting the bathroom each day. Well, that came up uh, with an interesting idea to say adding a motion detector right at the entry door to a bathroom could show how often the bathroom is visited and also show the occupants in time. A caregiver who's taking care of, you know, mom, dad, you know, aunt or uncle or whomever uh, could then see graphically that the premises was visited or the room was visited how long it was occupied, how many times it was occupied per, you know, per unit time, and make a determination whether they need to look into it a bit more closely and see if there might be an underlying health concern that they might have been missing because they're physically not there observing them all the time. Again, these devices add into a home automation uh, server. So, if your loved one is still living alone, you probably want to make sure that their environment looks like it has a lived-in look, so that lights are going on and off, and uh, people who might be observing them don't plan, uh, you know, to take advantage of them because they uh, they see that there's no activity. Again, using the same home automation server and accompanying light devices or light switches, the premises could be made uh, lived-in looking so that lights could be turned, in, turned on and off at different times during the day, could be connected in with emotion sensors so that areas could be lit when your loved one is walking into an area to make sure they're not stumbling into a dark area, to give them a little bit more of an edge in terms of the uh, safety and health uh, management of their own environment. So one of the things that could happen is uh, your loved one might, in addition to opening doors, they might open windows. They uh, might feel that they need some fresh air or they might be uh, getting enclosed or cooped up and they need to open the window for, you know, for a little bit of, uh, of expanding of their environment and so forth. Adding into a home environment, home automation system, these sensors, in this case I showed an example of the dome sensors, could be added into a window or a door or, you know, another uh, egress point so that on your smartphone or your, your tablet, you could get a notification that the window's been opened. And more importantly, that it's still open this way, instead of searching through their, you know, their living space to see whether they've opened it or not, you'll know real, uh, real time that they have opened it and that the, um, you know, they may not have closed it. 
as disease progresses or as they're alone, you may find that they become withdrawn or despondent. With the other type of technologies, uh, cameras and motion sensors, you may get an idea of what they, that they are or aren't uh, you know, up and, uh, up and about. Well, in addition to a TV, something like a Roku device or any other device that could provide YouTube video or access to content could be added to their uh, TV and home entertainment system so that at particular times they could be engaged in exercise or dance or whatever they're physically capable of uh, that would then get them up and moving. Uh, just as a point to note, some of my favorite um, you know, YouTube videos include Andre Rue concerts, which uh, you know, are done and uh, they're, they're done in a fantastic way and they're quite uplifting. And uh, chair yoga, uh, one of the instructors, Sherry Zach, puts on very good shows. Um, so, you know, your likes and dislikes may, uh, may vary, but uh, these could be very handy. And in addition, with, uh, with one of these Roku devices, you might even record home videos and still photos of family events that play in the background so that your loved one can also enjoy reminiscing, if you will, with their family as long as they're capable of, uh, of doing so. Um, I've gone through this pretty quickly, but in, in summary, uh, we'll, we'll see that uh, our loved ones are experiencing increasing difficulties and challenges and hardships. And uh, as caregivers, we know that it's a very, very difficult and challenging uh, situation. Very hard to put yourself in there in their shoes for what they're dealing with. But anything that, uh, that we could do to make their life a little bit ha happier, a little bit healthier, and a little bit safer, uh, you know, is probably very well appreciated by them. When you're uh, looking into your own situation, you might have other varying needs and uh, uh, circumstances that crop up. If you note something that was not included in this presentation that you'd like to hear about or see a potential technical solution to, feel free to send me an email. The uh, email address is included on the cover page, um, and I'd be happy to address that. If you have any other questions, you can also feel free to email me at that uh, email address as well. Some of the resources that, uh, that you may find helpful uh, to, get the, um, to, you know, to get these devices, uh, to, um, you know, to get these devices, to buy them inexpensively and so forth, uh, might, um, might be homeseer.com, smarthome.com, smartest house, Amazon. And one of the places that I always recommend, take a look at slipdeals.net which is a site that um, publishes deals that are going on. So if you're buying things, don't pay full price. Uh, a question came up from Suzanne. Can I recommend the simple affordable device smartphone with GPS? I believe uh, that there is a participant on the phone, if I could. I don't have, I don't have, uh, experience with that it did not work but if Carrie Schwartz if you're listening and uh, and are able to join in the chat could you make mention of uh, what you have going on I don't know if Carrie is uh, <clears throat> is, is able to join in the, uh, in the voice part but um, We'll get the information out to you, uh, Suzanne, <clears throat> right after this webinar. Ferry's uh, organization has a, um, a smartphone watch that has GPS and uh, is amenable to particularly people who don't want to feel like they're being tracked. 
So we can get you that information after the, um, you know, after the, uh, this uh, presentation is over. Okay. And then, uh, in closing, I'm always happy to add uh, use cases to these, as I mentioned. Um, I don't sell anything. These are, I, these are thoughts and ideas that uh, I came up with our own caregiving requirements in my own family, as well as uh, the people that I've met and the caregivers uh, uh, within Circle of Care, and other technical uh, resources that I know from my own professional career. Uh, so very happy to share these. Um, I did find that uh, there's a couple of key challenges with this space. One of them is that uh, since there are so many different manifestations of you know, issues that crop up in the caregiving space, it's hard to look at, um, you know, any case and, uh, you know, and say that this will solve a problem. Uh, the other thing is, sadly, commercial uh, institutions find it difficult to invest in this space because, as mentioned, the person that needs care usually doesn't have any financial resources or, or many financial resources at all to buy expensive uh, solutions and caregivers themselves are usually burning the candle at multiple sides taking care of their own family paying their own bills and uh, you know running over to, uh, to periodically help their loved one. Um, Gratitude Farm uh, posted a uh, comment that I'll read We've experienced several falls out of bed for our loved one with dementia. We installed a sensor pad, but it's too late sometimes when they put it's the pad. What about sensors to detect if someone is sitting up in bed? I'm, I don't have an answer to that specifically, but I can uh, suggest that a motion sensor put into their bedroom might give a caregiver an indication that they're stirring. So for instance, if they're in bed and you leave them and they're sleeping and you're doing chores around the house and you have this home automation implemented with motion detectors, you can put, the, put them in the bedroom and watch the motion detect or listen to a motion detector signal. And if they start stirring as in get up, you might be able to get back to them before they try to draw themselves. Um, I'm sure that circle of care might have other uh, caregiver resources that can talk about, uh, you know, bed bars and things of that nature, which I don't have personal experience with, so I can't uh, really address that. But I think um, motion detectors might uh, might be a, a good, um, you know, uh, a good opportunity. Okay, with that, I am done, and I do thank you for for your time and attention and wish everybody the best of luck in their own personal circumstances. So back over to you, Shane. Yes, um, thank you again, Steve. That was an amazing presentation. A lot of good information. Um, I think one more person asked a question. Can you see it? I see two questions recommending the uh, affordable smartphone. And I tried to did I see it? Um, gratitude form. I can read it. If you yes, can. I just answered that. Install okay. the sensor pad. Uh, I was suggesting that they they try uh, looking into a motion detector. Uh, and to get back to the smartphone with GPS, I directed them to Carrie Schwartz, who contacted mm -hmm. me earlier. I don't know if Carrie has the ability to to jump into this from a voice standpoint. Um, yeah, so they can. Um, if you, let me see, let me just go back. If you wave at me, I can allow you to, but, um, to say something. Who do you say, Steve? Uh, Carrie Schwartz. Okay. 
Oh, so she can because she's using the old version. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I could put, I'm going to try to put her website up if I can find the message with it. I wasn't prepared for that, but she was, yes. she was okay. She sent me information regarding uh, what they did. It looked quite, um, quite good. Uh, okay, no problem. Um, Carrie, I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to allow you to talk, but um, because you're using the old version of it of Zoom, it doesn't. It does not allow me to do that. So, but um, I put you as a um, panelist, so you probably will be able to say something. Let's see. Um, yeah, you can. Let me unmute you. Can you hear me? Trying to say can something. You hear me? Hey, yes, I can hear you. Here you go. Thanks so much, Steve. Um, so we've developed a customized smartwatch, which has its own phone number in it, um, for the senior community. And it has all different sensors in it. Um, it as Steve said, it is something that does not stigmatize people. It actually works with Samsung, so it's actually their latest device. Um, and we have, it's all proprietary. I have a team of developers who have, in layman's terms, taken all the firmware off of the present watch and just put on what is crucial for this community. Um, but it is a health and fitness device. It does have, um, we are working on fall detection, but we're not there yet. So when you were talking about people falling out of bed, um, but this is for se uh, for seniors that are both active and are experiencing uh, cognitive issues. And for the caregiver, it's integrated into a platform that allows caregivers, loved ones, to know where the senior is, the wearer, as well as know how they are. But I would be happy to speak to anyone. So. Um, if there's a way of getting our information out, that would be great. Um, yes, let me, I'm not sure if you can share your screen, if you have anything on your screen you want to share it. I don't, but I will send some information to you, um, yes. and then maybe you can share it that way. Yes, I can do that. Yes. Thank you so much for including us. This is um, a community that's very close to our hearts. I, Steve, I came to this as well because of a, an in-law that um, was experiencing the cognitive decline as well. Um, and so we're very committed to trying to make a difference within this community, both for people that live independently and, um, and have moved to assisted living or other communities. Yes, um, we're all here to provide um, resources to, to the community and it's, it's always great to work together um, in all form, type of form to help the community. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Carrie. And um, th again, thanks everybody for joining. If you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, feel free to send um, an email to caregivertech at outlook.com and I'll be happy to answer it. Um, I also do this presentation to Circle of Care from time to time. Yes. Um, and one other, uh, one other thing, I have material, train the trainer. As I mentioned, this is not a commercial product, but if uh, there are groups of people that want to learn about technology, want to implement these solutions for their particular caregiver case, I'd be happy to give a train the trainer, providing the people that are participating help each other as they progress through implementing and um, you know doing their own technical support for the uh, for the solution sets. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Steve. Um, if you have for if every, anyone has further info um, questions, you can reach out to me or you can reach out to Steve. Um, thank you again. That was an amazing presentation. Also, the presentation will be um, available online in a few days because we posted in our website, psusa.org.
slash event or um, and you'll be able to see you can scroll and then look for the presentation um, if you miss any part of it you can go back and watch it again um, and in future days maybe we can do it again Steve for people that wanted to participate um, maybe we can reschedule another one okay thank you thank you again have a great day